Have you ever picked up a feather off the ground just to admire it? There's something kind of magical about it. So light and delicate, yet strong and perfectly engineered. Feathers aren't just for flying. They are multi-purposeful. They insulate against cold, shed water like a raincoat, camouflage, protect from the sun, and sometimes dazzle us with colors so bold they help attract a mate. And the variety? It's astonishing. Take the shimmering greens and purples of a wood duck, the bright yellow pop of an American goldfinch in spring, or the fiery red of a northern cardinal against fresh snow. Birds are like the fashion icons of the animal kingdom. But among all these colors, there's something about blue that stops us in our tracks, such as in birds like the blue jay. Why is that? A couple reasons. For us humans, blue has a calming effect. Studies have shown it can actually slow our heartbeat and breathing. It's the color of peace, trust, and tranquility. But here's the other reason. In nature, blue is surprisingly rare. Aside from the sky and the ocean, you don't see much of it. Fewer than 1 in 10 plants manage to make blue flowers, and in animals, even rarer. So, when a blue jay flashes those bright feathers, it feels special. There's a twist, though. Those feathers aren't actually blue in the way we think they are, which makes this whole thing more interesting. Let me explain. But first, how do birds get their colors in the first place? Most of the time, it's thanks to pigments. Think of pigments like tiny paints stored in a feather. At the molecular level, they are chemically designed to soak up some colors of light and bounce back others. Birds use two main kinds of pigments. The first is melanin, which creates the earthy tones you see in various species. Colors that vary from the darkest blacks through subtle grays and from muddy browns to red browns, yellow browns, and pale yellows. Birds make their own melanins from amino acids obtained from the proteins in their diet. And besides providing color, melanins also add strength to feathers. The second is carotenoids, which are plant-based pigments found in berries and the seeds of plants. Many bright colors like yellows, reds, and oranges come from carotenoids. Birds acquire these pigments directly by eating plants that have them or indirectly by consuming animals that have eaten these plants. That's how male northern cardinals end up so brilliantly red. Their enzymes transform carotenoids from berries and seeds into a kind of feather paint, which gets deposited into every plume. So far, I haven't mentioned blue. That's because in nature, true blue pigments are almost non-existent, which raises the big question. If there's no blue paint in a blue jay's palette, then how do they end up looking so vivid? Unlike cardinals, which use chemistry to paint their feathers red, blue jays use physics. Think about a rainbow. Raindrops don't contain paint, yet we see bands of color because of how light is bent and scattered. The feathers of blue jays are pulling off a similar trick, only instead of raindrops is using microscopic structures in their feathers. Keratin, the same stuff in our hair and nails, and tiny air bubbles within it are arranged in a precise spongy pattern. And here's where the magic happens. Those air pockets are just the right size and spacing apart to scatter blue light back to our eyes, while letting the longer red and yellow wavelengths slip through or get absorbed. The result? Feathers that appear brilliantly blue, even though there isn't a drop of blue pigment in them. It's nature's optical illusion, a magic trick of light and a unique structure working together. You can even prove it yourself. If you hold up a blue jay feather and let light shine through it instead of bouncing off it, the blue vanishes. What's left is a dull brown, the underlying melanin pigment. And if you were to grind the feather into powder destroying the structure, the dust would also look brown or colorless. Do the same thing to a cardinal feather, and it'll stay red, because pigment doesn't disappear when you break the feather apart. So the key difference is this. Pigments are like paint inside the feather, while structures use optical tricks built into the feather. 
Both involve light, but the way they do it is completely different. Here's another layer of brilliance. Not all blue is the same as we can see. Why is that? Well, each species builds its feather structures a little differently, resulting in a stunning variety of shades. From the electric flash of the splendid fairy wren, to the deep indigos of a stellar's jay, to the soft sky blue of a mountain bluebird, each bird is reflecting light in its own unique way. But there's also one more silent helper. Melanin, the earth tone pigments I mentioned earlier. Beneath the nanostructures, a thin layer of melanin acts like a dark canvas. It soaks up stray light so the blues stay crisp and vivid. Without it, the colors would look pale and washed out. More melanin means deeper, richer blues, like in Stellar's Jays or Indigo Buntings. Less melanin leaves softer tones, like the powder blue of a mountain bluebird. Many times, it's a combination of melanin pigment and feather structure. There's a little perk for birds like blue jays and bluebirds who rely on structures rather than the carotenoid pigment found in food sources. No matter what they eat, they'll retain that vivid blue color. Whereas birds like cardinals would begin to look brownish if their food sources were depleted. So why doesn't nature just make a true blue pigment? Well, chemically, it's one of the hardest colors to produce. Blue light has short wavelengths and carries more energy, which makes creating a stable pigment that reflects it a real challenge. That's why blue pigment is so rare, seen in only a few species like the Obrina olive wing butterfly. And for plants, even if they could make that kind of pigment, it would come at a cost. Blue light is one of the most valuable colors for photosynthesis. It helps drive growth and keeps plants healthy. Reflecting it away to look blue would mean losing a major energy source. That's why fewer than 1 in 10 flowers appear blue, and even then, most are using different tricks of their own, not blue pigment. Since plants don't make true blue, birds and other animals don't have a food source to turn into blue either. Cardinals can borrow red from berries, flamingos pink from algae and shrimp, but blue jays or bluebirds? No such shortcut. So nature found a clever workaround. Instead of chemistry, birds and other life forms used physics to look blue. Building nanostructures in their feathers and skin that bend, scatter, and reflect blue light safely and efficiently. No costly pigments required. That's why in almost every case, the brilliant blues we see in birds are illusions of physics, not true pigments. And honestly, I think it makes it even more fascinating. It's spellbinding the various hues that exist in birds. The process is required to create so many of the different colors and intensities we see. For birds, though, things look much more colorful than our eyes are capable of perceiving. They see a wider spectrum with more colors in between. For example, what we see as the blue part in a rainbow would be several distinct colors to a bird. This is because birds have a fourth cone in their eyes, while we only have three. That extra cone allows them to see violet light and, in some birds, ultraviolet light, expanding their vision far beyond ours, giving them countless subtle shades and variations that we can't even imagine. This adds a whole other layer to how they view the world and how they see each other. But that's a whole other topic. For now, just take a moment to appreciate the science and beauty behind the color blue in birds. And while we marvel at all these shades, we should also remember that not all birds use color to captivate us. Some use their beautiful voices, like the hermit thrush. It may not be a show-stopping beauty, but its song, Pure Heaven. If you want to hear what that sounds like while learning about their incredible song and how it impacts people on a deep level, check out the video linked on the screen. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy birding! This skill is thanks to the paired valve syrinx in the bird's throat. Each side is independently controlled, allowing for two different notes, one from each half of its syrinx, to be produced.